Hi there, my name's Ian, um, and I'd like to talk to you today about this. It's a tent that I've just brought, and it's a uh, Bangle Force 10 uh, Xenon 2. And it's a two person tall tent. And the reason that I bought that is because of this. This is the tent that I've been using for the last seven or eight years, Bangle Tornado 200. It's been a good tent, there is no question about it, it still is, and I will continue to use it. It's a semi-geodesic tent, um, and I've been using it for just brief trips away, camping obviously, uh, and sometimes bike touring. Again, very brief, long weekends, perhaps just four days. Um, I'm hoping in the not too distant future to do some longer trips away and to do some slightly more serious bicycle touring. Uh, obviously I'm going to need a tent. The bango, I'm afraid, can't come with me. Uh, it's rather too heavy. It's a really, it's a chunky tent. It's quality material, but it's too heavy and it's too bulky. So I've been looking around for an alternative, which is where the Force 10 Xenon came in. As you can see, it's much smaller in terms of pack size and it's certainly a lot lighter. I know how heavy this one is, I haven't actually measured in the bango, but I can tell just from picking it up that it acts a lot more. So the Force 10 comes in at, well, it says in the literature that it's 1.64 kilos for the pack weight. I put it on the scales and as it stands there, perhaps the label's adding a bit, but it's about just a nudge over 1.8 kilos. Nevertheless, that's still pretty good for uh, a lightweight tent. Not the lightest, but it's still very light. Um, if I wanted to go lighter, I think I would have had to go gone for perhaps um, one of the single loop tents. Um, the single loop, single pole tents where the hoop is in the middle. Uh, but I wasn't prepared to go quite that small. I wanted something with a little bit more space, it's a two-man tent. Uh, I also wanted just enough headroom for me to be able to sit like this comfortably. I'm not a tall person, I'm only about five foot nine, but nevertheless I'm a uh, more mature person, so just getting in and out of the tent needs to be a little bit easier. I'm not infirm or immobile, but just to make my life that bit easier, I thought a tunnel tent with an end open while in the side opening that you get in some of the single person expedition tanks would be easier. So, as you can hear, I've had a look at one or two other tents and there are a number of tents, two man tunnel tents that caught my eye that were worth considering. Fango themselves do the Nova, um, then there's the it's Terra Nova Hulu, both good tents, both quality manufacturers. Uh, just a little bit on the porky side, so um, certainly north of two kilos, getting up towards three kilograms. Um, so not quite as light as I might have liked. There are other lighter tents, including this one. Um, there are others like the there's a Rogan's tent, if you get the name of it. There's the Terra of the Starlight, and of course the Hillbird Mallow. Um, the Robins is in mid price bracket, so that comes out to about the same as this. The, both the Starlight and the Mallow are northwards of £500, and for the Hillaboo, you're looking for over £600. I wasn't quite sure whether or not I would take two longer bike expeditions, uh, especially camping, so I didn't want to spend quite that much in case I didn't take two and then had to get rid of the tank. So I thought I'd go for something in the mid-price range, something that I know will be a quality because I'm already happy with the tornado. So that, that I guess was my rationale. I also went and got the uh, footprint for this. Uh, again, that uh, will be attaching to the tent itself, so that will add a little bit of weight, but only 310 grams. So, in total, £25 I think it was ish for the footprint, £219 for the Xenon, which the original price range is 
sort of £350, I think. So 219 I thought was a quite a good bargain. So we'll get to this now then. Um, I guess this isn't really a review. The label's still on it. I've not used it at all, so I can't speak from any experience yet. So in the future, I'll perhaps come back to this when I've been out and about on it for a while. Uh, so this is more of an unboxing, I guess, or, or perhaps an unbagging, since it's a tank. So you can see that it's stored in this uh, stuff sack, which has integrated um, compression straps on. They're also released by a quick release mechanism, so you can uh, unplug those really quickly, or release and then tighten. It's a really easy job, so that's good. Um, the unusual thing about this uh, bag is that it's a middle opening, whereas you would normally expect to find that at the end, like it is on the Tornado. I'm not quite sure about that yet. It, it looks a bit baggy and saggy, doesn't it? But what that does do is it gives you one big advantage. So if you open that up, see how long that is for a start. Look at the size of that opening. So the idea, I guess, is that it makes it much easier when you're putting this away. Um, I get to come be convinced that that's a, a useful feature. Uh, I always feel that if you're trying to get the tent into a bag, or a sleeping bag, or a sleeping mat into a bag, or a footprint, then if it won't fit in that end opening, then you've not done a good enough job of rolling it up. Or you've got too much in there, you've put some extra stuff in and it won't fit. So, I guess that's the comment that I would make. Um, we'll see. If once the footprint's on the tent, I'm hoping to give it a go at wrapping the whole things together so they're all in a single bag. If that works, then that might be a, an advantage of having this bigger bag. So let's take a look inside. We have the tent itself with some very nice ribbons on. I think we'll get rid of those. That'll save another gram or two. Um, oh, let's just, what else have we got in here? I have had this open before and out came two repair kits. So each of these contains um, a whole repair piece, so like a ferrule to fit over a broken pole, the usual kind of thing, and of course some swatches uh, for the different fabrics that are in the tent and the fly sheet and so forth. No glue of course, but that's probably to be expected. You don't want glue to be sitting around for too long, it's done uh, harden up I guess, so I'll go off. Of course we've got some tent pegs and they're in their own little bag here with an elasticated strap on, so empty room. That could be hung up, I guess. Not sure why, but you could do that. But it's not a draw cord, so I'm not sure whether that's good or bad. So you simply fold over like that and then put the elastic over the top. It did come in, so there we go. So inside that, you've got some different pegs. You can feel that we've got two of that eyelet type of pegs and the rest are all the kind, these are really light, incredibly light compared with the kind of the pegs that are in the Van Gogh. Maybe they're flimsy too, only time will tell. Uh, they're a sort of new cross section. Or whether or not you might be able to, or want to take a closer look. Let's come up here. So if you can see that, see what they look like. They also, when you look at it like that, that T-section at the top doesn't seem exactly perpendicular, so I guess once they're in at the right angle they'll hold on to the rope. We shall see. So, pegs, repair kit, we open up the tent. And you need the lovely ribbons. Of course, what you'd expect to find inside. Oh. A set of poles. They come in there on biting. Again, elasticated with the loop on. And two. Oh, nice and sort of hole. Indeed, we have a uh, colour coder. Got one blue and one gold, or bronze perhaps. These again, compared with the poles in the tornado are incredibly light by comparison. 
Um, so we'll see how they go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this tent pitched. Um, I'm not going to give you the pleasure of me seeing it pitch it for the first time. I'm sure it will not be a problem, uh, but I'll get underway and then come back to you very shortly. Okay, so here we are then. Tent pitched. Not fully pitched, it has to be said. Haven't put the guy lines out. Um, it did take me a little longer than I would have expected, but some of the connections uh, where the um, elastics and tensioning bands are placed and how they work are slightly different. It was also um, not tricky at all, but just making sure I got the ground sheet the right way around and um, in the right place. Failed on the first attempt, succeeded on the second, and getting that connected in. Um, haven't done all the guidelines and um, pegged them out. Um, it's fairly uh, breeze free at the moment so we don't need to worry too much about that uh, but we'll take a walk around we'll start at the back and then we'll make our way to the front and see some of the different aspects of the tent so um, as you can see it is flapping a little bit in the breeze there that's because we haven't got the guidelines attached but then tunnel tents I guess do tend to do that a little bit more than geodesic tents uh, getting them pitched right is, well, I guess it's crucial to make sure that you don't get all that um, outer tent, that mass in the middle there, flopping onto the inner when you might have got condensation on inside and then making the inner tent wet, uh, less than comfortable, one would expect. This uh, section at the back seems much longer than I was anticipating, actually, and the whole tent seems bigger. Uh, I think... I'm, I'm pretty much convinced that it's got a bigger footprint than the tornado which surprised me it just feels bigger so if we take a look at the bike and start here then we can see one or two of the different aspects to the tent um, we've got uh, multiple guiding points at the back there are three guiding points and they're all attached to that single hoop and I guess that's about keeping the tension of the middle section in place so let's take a look at some of the ways in which it's attached so we'll go down to first of all where the first pegs are put in or at least that's where I put the first pegs in here we can see the pegs and uh, despite my reservations they do seem to be uh, fitting in well clearly they're not getting much attention at the moment from the weather the one thing I would say is that the tent does appear to be a bit floppy but that's probably my pitching my problem uh, and I guess with practice I'll get better at it here's one of the places where we can make adjustments to the uh, tension of the tent and this was something that fooled me at first I hadn't come across this they don't have these on the tornado so if you look at this buckle system uh, and this little attachment here the way that this works is it's a quick release mechanism so we do that and we can very quickly just one-handed retention the tent that way and adjust the tension of the tent to varying degrees so that's really easy to do i was impressed with that um, i'm not sure about the knot there and it looks as though it's likely to stay in place i think i'd want some spare uh, paracord with me to make sure that there's no problems there um, i'll just release that and we'll take a look just inside for a second so you can see the points of attachment so we'll bring you down here. Um, here we've got, oh, let's come around the other side. That's not so good there. That's better. And um, we have the, underneath there, we've got the um, attachment for the ground sheet. You can, uh, you can see that that's um, elastic perhaps. So that's good. This clip-on system is quite good. I'm impressed with that and the way that that works. Uh, that's fairly easily released as you can see. Um, the hoop that's there uh, seems to be fairly well sewn into the rest of the tent. Um, only time will tell and see how that wears. There is some extra stitching there but there's nothing, there's no extra bits of fabric so we're relying entirely on that stitching. 
we'll keep fingers crossed I'm sure it'll be fine it's British weather what can go wrong so and then we've got the fly sheet attached through that point so we've got both of those attached there and it's the same at each corner uh, there's no fly sheet let's just tension that back up just come back out of it there's no fly sheet attachment point at the center line but you can see that we've got just come back a bit uh, this guy line which both tensions the tent because of the double system you can perhaps see here if we just come round here uh, so it's that double guy line effect where the top part of the guy line that's this part up here is attached to the um, the little hood that covers the ventilation port and inside there up inside there where you probably can't see where my hands going there is a little uh, no seam mesh um, I'd like that to be more open than it is to be honest but mm, we'll see how that goes the problem is that when you pull increase the tension of the guy rope just here because of this double thing, yet the whole guy rope pulls on both. So it pulls the hood down and tends to close it. Hmm. Might have to have a think about that. So ventilation is something that I'm going to seriously have to consider. Okay, so some of the other points. As you can perhaps just about see at that guy line point of attachment, there's a little reflective strip. Um, I'm not quite sure about them. People have heard say in other videos it helps you find your tent in the dark. Um, I guess if you're wild camping that might be an issue, both positive and negative. You may, if you're wild camping, want to be more discreet and if someone's out in the woods and shining a torch around your tent's going to stick out like a sore thumb because of these it's also reflective on that hood too um, but of course there's always pros and cons um, just taking a look down here you can see this colour coding that's the point at which the brown pole obviously goes in so that was helpful there the pole sleeve is quite snug I found I'm not sure that you could get, yeah, you might just about get two poles in there if you had to. Um, but I don't foresee myself being in conditions wherever that's ever likely to be necessary. I'm not on an expedition to the Arctic Tundra at the end of the day. Uh, down here at the point of insertion, on some of the uh, more expensive tents, you tend to get uh, a, like a little plastic cup just here. The Nalo's certainly got that, so it slots into there. Here you've got the circular grommet. Um, so, don't know, pros and cons, I suppose, for both. Uh, we've got some extra stitching on there, so hopefully that'll be enough to keep that. Um, and we've got a, a, an anchor point as well, if we need to uh, put a peg in there. There's no peg in the centre, I'm right in saying, there's no pegging point here anywhere. Um, and while I'm here, can you see my fingers through that? This is really, really fine material. There's no wonder it's so light, I was really surprised. But I'm given to believe it is... Uh, I, don't, I can't remember what denier it is, but it's a high denier factor and uh, ripstop material, so people do swear by these things, more experienced people than me. Um, another high point, point of attachment, and we'll come around the front now. Okay. So, there we can see the front of the tent, a hood, reflective piping across the top once again. Uh, we've got this open at the moment. Ooh, that lurched to the left quite a bit there. That's because there's no guy lines in the course. I'm sure that won't happen in real life. We've got um, the fly sheet in as you can see and it's attached uh, both to the front as it's in the same way it was to the rear. So if we take a look inside which was, I'll set up a tripod so we can do that and then I'm not handling it so I can talk to you okay, more about it. Okay, so we've got this vestibule section 
which is reasonably sized I suppose if I sit like that um, I could sit up in here with the tent door closed I'm not sure I'd want to with a tent door in my face but you could do obviously you can open the um, open the inner tent door and sit that way um, you can certainly get plenty of gear in here um, when I'm cycling to when I'm cycle touring I would guess that I'll have four panniers probably um, I have done in the past when I've been camping so they could sit almost all of them in here certainly not with me as well but there's plenty of space in the tent we'll take a look inside later on but um, yeah it's a good size vestibule certainly plenty of room to put your footwear the one thing I would say is um, this band at the front which I guess tensions the sides of the tent you can't detach it at any point it's fixed and stitched in at both sides um, it must be to do with the tent structure but I guess I, these are pegging points so I guess the idea is that you put it down there to stop it being a, a trip hazard it's the same on the tornado that I've got as well across the entrances there are two up on either side you've got these two these bands on either side and again, and again the, the fly sheet I suppose could be a trip hazard if you're not careful but it's just a matter of taking care isn't it the fly sheets uh, as we saw before has got these uh, elastic bands on to keep <coughs> to keep everything nice and taut uh, and that seems to be working particularly well one thing I did notice when I was pitching it and putting the poles in the rear pole went in quite well that's a little bit shorter this pole here um, got stuck as I was passing it through to the other side it's in the sleeves and it was down to the um, the inner being pitched with the fly sheet on the outside and that's got all these tension bands around the, um, the inner is attached to the outer with all these elastic bands and it had got just squished up and so just releasing a couple of those allowed the pole to pass through much, much easier. Bear that in mind in the future, make sure that those are not secure when I'm uh, packing the tent away. Okay, so it's a reasonable size porch, as I said. You've got this little hood with a wire and a reflective bit of piping. Seems to have got bent as it's um, been stored in, um, in its pack, I suppose. Um, what you can do is, of course, have part of the door open at the top to allow some ventilation in through the mesh at the front. I guess that's a good idea. The door, outer door is secured by, as is usual, with these little hoop and um, little toggle mechanisms. Uh, it's fairly easy to release. This is quite loose actually. I guess with the material, the loop hoops are quite generous. So um, there's, it's very easy to get the, the toggle in there. Uh, very easy to get the toggle out. I'm just not sure whether it, how secure it actually is. I'm saying it's easy to get it in and they're making it look like a foot. Well, yeah, that seems okay. So what I'll do is I'll close the door. You can see what it's like with the door closed. Um, one thing that's really impressed me with this is the zips. I'll show you what I mean. On my tornado, the zips don't operate quite that slick with just one hand. You do need to sort of hold the tent firm with one hand and, and move the zip with the other, sometimes. Uh, and sometimes you get a jab. So that is really, really good. I'm impressed with that. So you can see here that you can leave you can leave a little bit of the tent door open at night, uh, at the top here, um, provided it's not raining of course. You can leave as much as you like, want, as much as you want open for ventilation. So that works quite like that. Obviously that won't come off at the bottom. Clearly it won't because the other zip's there. But something that struck me, I'm just going to close and get back to normal. was that how useful it would be if you could actually take one side down completely and just have the other side up and then you've got 
perhaps just a, a little bit of wind shelter on one side but a bit more space on the other. I guess it's to do with the integrity of the tent but you can't take that away because it's structural, it's actually holding the tent up. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the tent, tent door. That all looks fairly secure. Um, if I turn around a little bit now, you can perhaps see the inner. Uh, that operates just as easily with one hand as the outer door. I'm really impressed with how well that works. Uh, we'll take a look at the door in more detail when we get inside, and you can see that it's a uh, uh, a partial mesh panel that you can undo to allow more ventilation. And again, let's see how easy that goes back up. That really is very good, I'm impressed with that. I'm also surprised at how fine this particular inner tent material is. Really, really fine, which I guess is important for the lightness. Um, one thing I didn't mention was I detach the tensioning band system, so there is a little push fit up here and there's one over on this side as well. I think you might be able to see that. And you can tighten that up and you can see that that pulls the tent down somewhat. So if you've got particularly windy conditions, um, I understand that these tensioning bands are useful for maintaining the integrity of the tent and keeping it in um, keeping its structure. Uh, but it would slightly get in the way for uh, access in and out if you, you, you using it in general terms. So, I'm clipping it and leaving it down there for the lift, the sensible thing to do. Um, one thing that struck me, I guess, is if you do need a little bit more room in this porch, it's just not a big deal to unclip. So, it's not a big deal. I'm going to make it look like a the operation there, but it's certainly not something you could do one handed this, but you could quite easily release the inner and across the top and then just pop that back a little bit and you've got a massive amount of space. So if you've got all your stuff in here and you were needing to do some cooking because the weather conditions aren't so good, uh, bear in mind all the usual safety requirements of course, um, you can easily pop down your inner just fold it back and then you've got, you've got acres of space to work in so that's possible anyway that's done for the porch perhaps we'll take a look inside now if you'd like to come and join me okay so here we are on the inside um it's probably easier if we go right inside and you can take a look and see what we've got available um, perhaps just looking past and over my shoulder you can get some sense of the length of the tent not so much because you won't have a system uh, a sense of scale opera uh, I guess but the one thing I would say is that this it seems enormous compared with the tornado um, the amount of space that I've got both at head and feet I'm, I'm five foot nine um, if you were six foot you'd still have plenty of space at head and feet um, perhaps we'll get a chance to show that in a second but come on inside and we'll just uh, close the door and you can get a um, some sense of what's going on with the door first of all um, just going to turn you off for a second okay so as I was as I was saying the door stashes away into a little pocket at the side there and again once you want to zip the door closed again it's a one handle way of doing it it's that really is much better than on the tornado I think. As you can see there's a single little flap at the top with a no seam mesh to keep out the bugs uh, and to provide the ventilation. It's not as big as on some tents this little half moon. Uh, on some it's almost the whole thing and on lots of other two and three season tents the whole of the inner tent is mesh. Uh, but I didn't want that. I'll be going to. I'll be out and about in, in British Spring and Autumn, so I wanted a little bit more protection. Um, that said, this inner tent material is incredibly silky and fine, and I guess that also helps keep the weight down as well. Um, the bathtub design it comes up quite high at the front and at the sides, so hopefully, if there is any wind, rain. Uh, 
wind blown rain coming in from the side it's not going to affect the tent inner at all that shouldn't get wet um, apart from the tent pocket uh, there's pockets all the way down the side virtually um, that probably is extravagant for me uh, I guess if you're touring you tend to be on in your tent for one night maybe maybe two um, and having lots of storage isn't something that has ever been a, a particular appeal to me but I guess it will be for some so things like the book that you might be reading or whatever uh, up here is a tiny little loop uh, and some more uh, storage so I guess you can put a light up there or hang a light from the loop or hang a washing line maybe from there to the rear um, I'm going to get you around and we'll take a look at the rear for a moment At the rear of the tent as you can see there's a mesh panel which goes uh, right across from over here uh, over to that side and out there you can see the hood um, and probably just about if we move you over there you can see that's the mesh panel inside the hood uh, it's not very big is it so throughput of air might be an issue and again we'll worry about condensation when we come to it should we do so so if we take you back to the front a minute I'm going to lie down now and you can get a sense of so if I move my head back and I'm going to touch backwards and backwards and backwards right at this point my head is now touching the front of the tent uh, in a tent so as you can see down there there's acres of space I could probably get most of them in fact I probably could get all the panniers I wanted down at the foot so if I'm carrying four panniers on the bike there's probably enough space for them down there having said that since it will just be me in this tent most of the time whether or not let's just come back down here so you can see me so there would be enough space for me to be sleeping down one side with a full sleeping mat in and plenty of space down the other side for the panniers or even in the vestibule in the porch area um, you could probably get a couple of panniers there and yourself seated yourself seated the one thing I would say about the porch that's not as generous as on the tornado clearly as you wouldn't expect from this kind of tent but yeah you would need to have the door open to sit there and cook particularly easy now that might be fine it might not be a problem but if you're in an area where there are lots of mosquitoes and airborne bugs you wouldn't want or I wouldn't want the tent inner door open during that time I don't want the bugs to be on the inside there's no point in having a no see and mesh and then letting them all in because you've got the door open and I'm not sure that if the weather's fine and you can have the front door of the tent out of fly sheet open that's not a problem at all if it was raining and you needed to cook inside and you've got bugs a condensing problem with the size of the vestibule or porch perhaps not being quite big enough to sit in Mm. again that's something that we'll find out but there is plenty of space out there there's plenty of space to put your shoes plenty of space to put a couple of panniers or a uh, rucksack if you're using if you're hiking this this would be a big enough tent for two people there's no question about it at all and it's a more than generous tent for one uh, I look forward to giving it a real try and getting out there and getting it pitched in so to speak but here now at this moment we're approaching the UK winter so I guess I don't have the robustness to go out cycling in freezing cold and wet weather so I'll wait until next spring and then we'll venture out there perhaps shoot another video and after I've used it in, uh, in a proper situation um, if you do have any observations or questions because I'm absolutely sure there's loads of things that I've not covered please by all means pop them in the comments and if 
I get the chance I'll come back to you and try and answer them for you. Thanks a lot.